Hi guys, Regina from Me Travel Life, and I wanted to talk to you today about winter sewing and some problems that we faced when we were winter sewing um, to help you um, not make these same mistakes. Last year was our first year of winter sewing, and so we were new, didn't know what to expect, and just went in full force, guns blazing, and we were going to plant our whole garden this way. I thought that. My husband said, no, that's just not going to work. Um, turns out he was uh, right. And yeah, so, um, so I wanted to give you some tips on what not to do for winter sewing um, so that you can be successful. So one of the things when you first uh, want to winter sew is you need to decide what you want to plant in the winter. And I should st step back and explain. Winter sowing is when you take your seeds, um, plant them in the snow, not in the snow itself, but in a container in the snow um, so that it will grow sooner um, as things start to warm up. And, uh, and it'll give you a little bit of a, uh, it'll give you an edge on your other plants uh, because the plants won't be in the garden centers yet for you to purchase and you can start growing them. Um, and then once it's warm enough, you can put them right directly into the ground. So that's winter sowing, basic, my basic understanding of it. Um, so what you'll need is a container to put them in. Uh, typically people use milk cartons, um, you can use fruit uh, jugs as well. Something that's clear or opaque that the sun's going to be able to get into um, because you want to uh, to be able to see it. Now some of those milk cartons are like straight up white. Those won't work. You want the ones that are kind of clear opaque. Um, those seem to work well. You'll want to put a couple holes in them. Maximum of five. I went a little crazy and put like ten in them. And if that happens, um, you can use a coffee filter in your um, at the bottom of your milk jug and that'll help retain some of that moisture in your dirt. You'll need dirt, pine soil is good, um, and you'll also need a marker to, to write on the milk jug what it is. So when you are writing on your milk jug you need to make sure that um, it's clear and you can you can read it uh, I used a sharpie I used a black sharpie it was a thin point it faded in the sun and wasn't so well so a backup for that was I also used uh, popsicle sticks. I got them from the craft area at the store and uh, wrote on the name what the, the things were in the containers as well. When you go to cut these uh, milk jugs you want to make sure um, you, you kind of cut it in half and I had cu cut them completely a ha in half and then the wind came and you, you do duct tape them together but what happened was they did come up, uh, apart. So this year I am cutting them around uh, the circumference but leaving it where that big milk sticker is. I'm leaving that uncut so that I can just fold it over and get in there, put the seeds in and, and close it and then um, put the duct tape around. So I'm hoping that'll help with the blowing away incident. Um, but in order to also make that a little bit better, um, I went into the school section of the local uh, big box store and they had crates and it looks like I can fit maybe four milk cr uh, milk jugs into that crate. I'm going to put them in a crate because the wind blew them, the wildlife took them and ran off with some of them and that killed some of the plants that we had uh, planted. On top of that, I'm also going to take a string, a rope of, of some sort I'm getting from the craft area. I'm going to tie the handle of the uh, 
milk jug to the crate so that it can't be pulled out because I'm doing whatever I can to keep things together and hopefully we'll be more successful. It's also going to be really easy to um, carry everything because it's all going to be in one thing that you're carrying out into um, into the snow. So once you've got all your things put together, you carry it out and drop it into the snow um, and, and you want it to be in the snow because that helps with stratification uh, and that will help the, uh, the seeds went over winter and be able to sprout and produce. And another thing we're doing this year is we're not doing so many things in the uh, winter sowing. I think we took on uh, way too much, like I said, and I think we might going to do four or five jugs and, and that'll be it. Um, that includes peppermint, lavender, and lemongrass. I bought pine berries at the store. I'm going to try to, I'm going to attempt to uh, procure some of those seeds to grow pine berries myself because they were $4.99 for 10 ounces. And I would like to expand that uh, expense and actually grow my own pine berries if possible. And if it is not successful it's it's not a lot of money out of out of my pocket it's just a couple berries that I took the seeds from uh, I might also do blackberries that same way so we'll see how that goes um, I attempted to just throw the blackberries on the ground last year and hope that they would grow and I pretty much believe I fed the birds so yeah so those are some of the things that we're going to do um, to help be successful with our winter sewing. I'm also going to attempt to uh, monitor them a little bit better because from what I've read online you are supposed to be able to just put them out in the winter and leave them leave them be. You might need to water them from time to time. In Michigan it's uh, it gets really warm in December sometimes. We have peaks where it gets really hot and I think things just uh, dried out and I should have went out there and watered them and, and monitored them a little bit better um, when it got warm enough to go and plant them directly into the the soil I didn't do that and some of the things wilted and died uh, we planted asparagus and those seeds went well and I was able to transplant them into the garden but when you plant an asparagus seed it takes five years for it uh, to before you're able to produce so one year down four more to go before I can enjoy that asparagus um, that might explain why it's so expensive in the store um, another thing uh, we planted was peppermint and that did really well and that's in a raised bed in a contained area and when you are dealing with herbs sometimes some of them, I don't know if all of them, run away with the yard. So you'll need to read on those and see if they uh, need to be contained. Peppermint is definitely one of them. Um, and you don't need a lot of catnip if you are if you have a cat and you want to do catnip. Because we had this bush get like huge, just one it, itself. Um, and it, it got in the way. I planted it by the house and in a container and it got like four foot tall or something. And the bees were on it and I took it out back and it grew again the following year so yeah uh, container in it and they will spread thanks so much for watching uh, let me know if your winter sewing what your winter sewing and how it has went for you have a wonderful day